Welcome back to Cinema Synopsis. Today I'm going to be explaining a science fiction action movie called Journey 2. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts with a police chase. The cops are chasing after Sean on a motorbike at night, which goes through a fence and up a swing set before landing in a swimming pool. The cops approach him, and as he sits in the back of an ambulance, Hank shows up. He's Sean's stepfather and he takes him home. Sean's mother Liz is very angry at him because he broke into a satellite facility. Sean's very angry because he was forced to move due to his mother's marriage to Hank. He goes into his bedroom, which is covered in pictures and magazine articles. The next day, Hank knocks on Sean's door to talk to him. Hank is smiling and tries to connect with Sean over the things that he's looking at, such as papers with Morse code. It turns out, Sean was trying to access a certain frequency inside the satellite facility. Sean thinks the broadcast signal has a secret meaning and is trying to decode it. Hank tells Sean they'll solve it together, but Hank knows how to solve it because he was in the Navy. The message reads, the island is real. Sean flips out in excitement as he decodes the rest of the message. Sean and Hank find out that they need to combine maps from three different books to find the mysterious island. Hank rips out the pages of the three books that have the maps on it. They put it together and shine a light on it and coordinates are revealed. Sean immediately starts packing up to go to the island but Hank reminds him that he's only a teenager. Sean says that the person behind the message is his grandfather and he has to go. Sean tells Hank that he doesn't need to worry about him and to leave him alone. Next morning, Hank is talking to Liz about what happened. Liz says that his grandfather is not who Sean thinks he is, but was a deadbeat dad instead. Hank wants to bond with Sean and tells him the good news. They're going to the coordinates. Sean is excited but not so enthused that Hank is going with him. Before long, they're in Palau and Sean is speaking broken English to the natives, not realizing they speak English. The ship captain refuses to take them, even for $1,000, but another captain, Gabe, willingly takes him on his helicopter. We then see Gabe's teenage daughter, Kaya, who of course, Sean is in love with. Kaya tells him that where they are going is deadly, and they'll take them there for $3,000. Sean tries to flirt with Kaya, but fails miserably. As they get closer to the coordinates, a huge hurricane makes the helicopter shake. Sean tells them that they need to fly into the eye of the hurricane to get to the island, but they all think he's crazy. Gabe tries to fly away, but the controls are broken. They fly into the eye of the hurricane, and everything is flying everywhere, and just as they hit the water, it goes black. Sean wakes up on the island, telling Hank that he has to believe since everyone is stunned. Now that they're on the island, it is not what Sean has pictured. Sean thinks he found a way off the beach, and they travel through a cave while hearing weird sounds. As they leave the cave, they see the mysterious island. It's beautiful, and the animals are all different sizes. Big animals are now small, and small animals are now big. They find tiny elephants and admire how the island mechanics work. They see smoke, and Sean wants to go to it, but Kaya and Gabe want to go back to the beach. Hank convinces them to stick together until they find Sean's grandfather and are able to call for help. As they are walking, they think they are stepping on giant rocks, but they realize they're actually stepping on giant eggs. The lizard starts to chase after them, and somehow they manage to escape thanks to the help of Sean's grandfather, Alexander. He meets them and takes them back to his house in a tree, which has an elevator and working plumbing. He tells them that it will take at least two weeks to get a radio signal because the frequencies aren't aligned yet. Sean is happy, but everyone else is upset, and Hank and Alexander continuously insult each other. The next day, they're traveling through the island, and Sean once again fails at flirting with Kaya. Hank stops him and gives him advice such as to do the opposite of your instincts and be in touch with your emotions. But most importantly, he tells him you have to pop your pecs. He has Sean toss berries into his pecs and they just bounce off. Finally, they find where they are going, the lost city of Atlantis. While everyone is busy being excited about finding the city, Hank discovers that the island will be sinking in two to three days. Sean remembers that an emo submarine, the Nautilus, should be on the island. He thinks they can use it to ride under the hurricane and get off the island. Now they are all on the search to find Captain Nemo's submarine. They go into Captain Nemo's tomb, and Kaya enters it alone to look for the journal, which has the submarine's location written in it. When she finds the journal and grabs it, the entire cave starts to cave in. However, she is able to escape just in the nick of time. After reading the journal, they find 
find that Captain Nemo's submarine is on the other side of the island. Alexander tries to think of the best way to get to this location. He tells them where they are going is very dangerous, and that they all must be up for the adventure. During their journey, they find a volcano that spews out chunks of gold. Sean wants to stop, but Hanks tells them that they have to keep going or they will run out of time. Kaya and Sean talk about how annoying their dads can be. Kaya makes Sean realize that it is actually good that Hank cares so much about him. They finally get close to where they need to be, but they're at the bottom of a cliff and they need to be at the top. Alexander hops on a giant bee and starts to fly to the top. They all mount on their own bees and fly to the top of the cliff. They all start laughing when a giant bird poops on Gabe's head, but when they see the bird it starts to chase after them since birds eat bees. Suddenly another bird joins the chase and there's now two birds chasing after them through the trees. During the chase, Kaya falls off a bee. However, Sean manages to catch her on the bee before she hits the ground. But Sean falls off the bee and injures his ankle. They set up camp for the night and Sean has to pop his ankle back into place. Hank, Sean, and Alexander have a pleasant night by the campfire, singing songs and talking. It's revealed that Hank's father left him when he was only 8 years old, and that's why he's so protective over Sean. Gabe and Callie talk by themselves about finances. Gabe promises Callie, even though he can't afford it, if she wants to go to college, she will be able to. The next morning, they all wake up in water meaning that the island is sinking fast. Hank tells them that the island will be completely submerged in only a couple of hours. They also discover that Gabe has left to go back to the Volcano of Gold. He wants to bring some gold home so that he can afford to send Kaya to a good college. Since Sean's ankle is preventing him from going to find Gabe, Alexander volunteers. He gives Hank and Sean directions on what to do. Sean and Kaya hold hands and say goodbye. Hank and Sean reach Poseidon's trident, which is where the Nautilus is supposed to be but it's not there. They realize that it's hidden underwater because of the rising sea level. They construct a breathing device to be able to breathe under the water and reach the Nautilus. They jump into the water and find the submarine. They attempt to open the hatch and are finally able to, despite a giant electric eel that gets in their way. Inside the Nautilus, they discover that the engine is dead. To jumpstart the engine, they realize they need the electric eel's help. They get everything set up and Sean is afraid that something is going to happen to Hank. Sean tells Hank that he needs him to come back. They have a bonding moment where Hank tells him that he's his son now and he will come back for him no matter what. Hank is outside the Nautilus in a diving suit and trying to lure the eel. He gets a good throw at the electric eel and the power of the Nautilus turns on. Meanwhile, we see that Gabe has stumbled across a giant gold nugget. Kaya and Alexander find him and convince him that they don't need gold to be rich. They all start to go back to find the submarine, but they get lost as their compass isn't working properly. They figure out which way is north by using spider webs which always face south. They also see a giant spider just as it is starting to storm and the volcano is about to erupt. They're holding on by floating on a piece of rock that broke off the island. They jump into the water and Gabe sees the submarine. They all manage to get inside the submarine safely. Gabe steers the ship and fires rockets at falling rocks to be able to escape safely. Once they are safe, Hank tells Sean to pop his pecs for Kaya and they kiss. Six months later, Gabe now has a successful tourism business because he uses the submarine as a tour ship. He is now able to send Kaya to college in America. Kaya is dating Sean, and on Sean's birthday, they are all celebrating as a family. He receives the book From the Earth to the Moon from Alexander. He suggests they go on another adventure to the moon all together this time. Sean asks who's up for an adventure. 